Thank you. Uh, as the title hopefully makes clear, this is not going to be a very technical talk. You'll have lots of good technical talks this afternoon. Uh, in fact, I'm going to start out with some very basic questions like, why are we here? I mean, I know this is RacketCon, but I mean, like, why are we here in the universe? <laughs> why is the universe here? What is the purpose of the universe? And I think it has become very clear as technology has progressed. The purpose of the universe is to produce a programming language. Okay. <laughs> um, some of us eat and sleep. We teach. Uh, we go to conferences. All of that is just a means to an end, to produce a programming language. Genes are just a very clever way of producing animals that will eventually help improve programming languages. Right? <laughs> so that is why we are here. Um, OK, you may not buy that right off, but we're at RacketCon at a week of functional programming and so on. So of course, what we want to do is um, you know, we just live and breathe this stuff. In fact, it's sometimes hard to separate ourselves from the problem of producing a programming language, uh, depending on how closely we look. So let's look very close. Okay. Um, you know, the, the universe is made up of atoms, and our programming languages, our ideas about programming languages, we, we think there are some core principles that, on which we can build everything else. Right? And in particular, the people in this room uh, tend to think of uh, the lambda calculus as something that's at the core uh, of a good idea of what to, to build up on, right? Um, and, um, you know, sometimes, in fact, just like atoms or did we invent atoms or discover them? You know, it's sort of a principle that we built this model that explains things very well. And a lot of our core pieces of programming languages have the same sense, right? You could just as easily say the lambda calculus was invented or discovered. And we share this sense that this way of doing things is, is, is somehow inevitable, right? It's, it's the mo model. And in fact, many of us, you know, especially in certain language communities, feel like you're working towards the one true language, right? The, the one language design. Um, uh, so we're going we're gonna to think more about this and uh, explore uh, as we go. And um, atoms are great, okay? Um, but you can't just walk around and, and think of everything as atoms, right? You see larger structures, in particular, the next step up is molecules. They're made of atoms. The model of atoms helps us think about molecules, but molecules themselves are kind of patterns that help us work towards bigger things. There's the, I don't know, the carbon ring pattern or the acid pattern or the oxidation pattern, these kinds of things. I'm not much of a chemist, of course, right? But we do the same thing with programming languages. There's, a, there's another level up that we, we tend to build things. We don't work in lambdas everywhere, right? With church encodings and all of that. It's good to know we can in principle, but we think in higher level things like the list pattern, the number pattern, the Boolean pattern, the recursive function pattern. Right? Um, and so, you know, we worked our way up from the lambda calculus to something like Lisp, say. And that makes us much more productive. Is this the only way to put atoms together? I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's so many that falls out very naturally. But there's various quantum mechanical effects that you could go in various directions to try to combine them to produce, you know, a programming language or, or whatever. Uh, but this is a way that you know, we sort of it seems like the universe has committed to going in this direction, to building up this next layer of structure on top of things. Right? Not only this particular idea of compounds, but very specific compounds uh, have uh, quite a lot of power, like this one in particular. Right? DNA is at some level just another molecule, uh, a big molecule, right? built up from atoms. But DNA has this amazing power that it also is somehow able to manipulate other molecules. Right? It's a molecule itself, but its job is to you know, manufacture proteins by manipulating atoms and, and molecules and so on. And you can see exactly where I'm going with this, right? Uh, DNA is like a macro. Right? <laughs> because it is a part of the programming language, but it manipulates the programming language. Um, and is DNA just a very clever macro? Is it uh, something that just happens to work well? Uh, you know, it's something that seems to have emerged from the basic principles, as if there's almost, almost no other way to do it to build up big structures. Right? Uh, and so, you know, we've worked our way up to scheme at this point. And, um, OK. 
Okay, if this is a good idea, we can keep going along the same line, right? You put the DNA together. If you have just DNA by itself, then it's just a kind of unwieldy string floating around, right? But if you put it in the right environment, like in a cell, then it can actually do its job. It can combine with other chemicals. And, um, and yeah, see, so you can see I'm doing old style notes and trying this out and figuring out how this works. Uh, so what you see is it seems like this is coming out, but there are other ways you could have put molecules together, right? Other ways of doing things. So there's kind of a trade-off between, you know, we're taking this progression that we recognize, atoms, molecules, DNA, and cells. Um, we can keep building up in this direction or we could try completely new ways of doing things, right? Nanoparticles that are different from cells and DNAs and engineering other structures. So another thing I want to draw out in this analogy is sort of this tension between going with the evolutionary path um, versus trying to make room to explore different directions. And how much we do that as individuals or as a language or as a community is a tension that we end up having to talk about at many different layers. Okay. One way that we feel that we're on the right track with things like DNA and cells and so on is that um, even working at the cell level, you know, there's still all of the chemistry that's underneath there, right? We still get molecules that interact with cells in certain ways. Uh, not all molecules interact nicely with cells, right? There are poisonous things to the cell and there are beneficial things to the cell. Right? So there's this whole spectrum of things you can already see from, from just this level of the analogy where you can explore things in different ways, but to make the cell really go and make able to, uh, to build up even larger structures, then you have a certain uh, way of doing things, a particular community, a particular worldview that says, yes, there's a lot of ways to do it, but we're all gonna generally go in this direction and see what we can build up. And that's a lot like a programming language community, of course. Right? We're gonna do things uh, in this general way. Right. So when I get to the cell here, you know, cells are kind of complicated things. There's the core principle idea, as you can see in there, but um, it's not just the DNA by itself. You have to put it in the right environment, right? You have to constrain it somehow and give it good pieces to work with, like a module. You have a community that commits to doing things a certain way, right? We want to allow exploration. Uh, you can do anything as you want as long as you do it in a module, right? The top level is hopeless, you know? It's a kind of poison to building up a large structure. It's not useless, but it's not what you want to, to build up in a structure. Right? And that's kind of the cell analogy here. There's a lot of different ways you can go, but we end up going this particular way at this level. And what you also see, is there's a lot of complexity that if you were kind of a very pure DNA kind of person, seems uh, ridiculous. There's not one kind of DNA here, there's two. It's in the nucleus and in the mitochondria. Why do you need these redundant systems? Um, and there's these all, all these other pieces that are float around it. Right? So it's a kind of complexity that, well, in the rackety kind of community, we don't necessarily give up on. Sometimes we embrace this complexity and say, it's okay, we'll keep looking for better ways to engineer a cell, but we'll also do what we need to do, embrace what needs to be uh, included in the system in order to build up larger things. And it's not gratuitous complexity, it's complexity that, that leads to a purpose. Some of it, it just comes out of the evolution of things, and you might have designed it a different way, but it's that same trade-off. How much do you worry about that? How much do you explore other directions? Light. You light on or off? Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, do you have any questions from out there? <laughs> what do you suppose next is, is next in this picture? You can tell I'm going to put the, uh, the cells together into worms, uh, <laughs> keep elaborating my design so I get it up to a fish or so. It's not a standard fish, but it's pretty good. What? What's the racket worm? The racket. Right. Uh, you know, or a lizard, or a dinosaur. 
Uh, so this is kind of a progression, the particular animals by shown here. But of course, there are a lot of different directions you can go with animals. Um, and maybe you want all of these, and maybe you want more. And you know, this is a layer where I'm kind of showing you a different picture. Before, there was a linear progression from, animal, from atoms up to animals. But now you can have bears and um, what's another class of animals? Uh, spiders. spiders, sure. Insects and so on. Right? And this is a kind of, it happens to be a human scale of things where we really appreciate the diversity and where we want to try all of these. Uh, evolutionarily, you know, you would never guess the little furry mice would work out well compared to the dinosaurs, right? So we have to let a lot of things grow at this level, right? So that's why we have not just one way of doing things at this level, right? You can have hashling fish and hashling dinosaur at the same time. And this is, again, part of our culture is that we really want to allow exploration at this detail. You, you can, in principle, in any language, work with many dialects of the language and sort of pre-process them, right? But I'm not talking about what you can do in principle. It, this is what we actually do, right? Racket is one of the few places that actually produce these different languages that we use in the same environment. Actually, the answer is the alias Frankenstein scheme, right? Uh, or, uh, yeah, it could be. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, right, so uh, here, is a, here is a level, the, the same kind of questions come up. <laughs> the lights need to be on for the video. Okay. I'll make brighter slides next time. Um, so we are sort of we have this tension between continuing in one path and exploring a lot of ways. And sometimes I think what we're trying to do is subvert the evolutionary process, right? Not have racket become obsolete because it is stuck in one particular way or one particular direction, but also uh, allow this different exploration, this kind of competition. But another way that I think we're on the right track goes back to the same with the DNA uh, layer, which is if hashling racket were on the screen here, it's in a significant sense no more special than any of these other things, right? The people who are, those of us who are designing what you might call a base variant of racket are not in a privileged position in terms of what you can say about hash laying something. And I take that as a kind of a benchmark for whether we're moving in the right direction. Does there have to be one special thing that we all have to stick with? Or is there a more pl level playing field where we can all contribute equally, right? It's a, something that keeps us honest in our design or helps tell us which way to go in, term, in, the, in the larger design space. Right. Adaptation the key word? Well, adaptation is part of it, but uh, uh, maybe adaptation at the next level up where we can adapt to whichever of these animals uh, turns out to be, to be good and that they can all, there's not just one person who has to go around making all the animals. Okay, and not only do we want to have all of these different kinds of animals, but we're not trying to make a zoo where you take each of these animals and, and put them in individual cases in cages and keep them separate. We want to put all our animals together in one forest or ecosystem. Right? We want these animals to, to work together to build up something even larger. Right? Uh, ecosystems are complicated things. Uh, it's you know, we hear all the stories about how animals get introduced to some place and destroy that ecosystem or, you know, some things that human do, humans do to tear down trees. They're, they're in some sense fragile things, but on the other hand, uh, it's also a place where change really does happen, right? The green lizards get replaced by yellow lizards. Right? And there's, there's room for improvement and for building up the ecosystem in a way. Uh, it's not all bad news in terms of the evolution and the progress of these ecosystems. Uh, there are sort of the cartoon pictures of how ecosystems work that you learn in elementary school, like the, the plants eat the sun and, and then the animals eat the plants and then other animals eat those animals, but eventually they die and the small bugs and, and microbes turn them back the dirt and the whole cycle, right? Um, but th there's, there's actually a lot of richness there and a lot of room for exploration and, and a lot of room for things to evolve and, and work together, right? So that you can have this thing that works as a whole and, um, and can, can do much more than any one animal, right? 
uh, at this level, I'm, uh, I'm sort of at packages, right? We went up to modules at the racket level and, you know, um, now we're at packages, these different kinds of animals that you can put into an ecosystem. And like all the other layers, we are, are um, sort of learning from what, was been, what has been done before. All right, here's the thing about a package system. You all know exactly what it's supposed to do, right? Everybody knows what a package does. <laughs> a package system does. Okay, several of you. Do. We just don't agree on it. Yeah. <laughs> I think if we knew, there would be more components. Right. So, uh, do we have a diversity of package systems? Should we have seven package systems and find out which one works well? Somehow, somehow that would be in the spirit of everything I've said before, but also in the same spirit of what I said before is that we commit to one package system or one view of package and, um, and then run with that and build more things on top of that. So how do we resolve that particular dilemma? Um, and uh, in this case, I think it's probably clear that committing to one is going to let us leverage, uh, you know, work together better. Right? Can you have multiple views on the package system? Yeah, you, I think you could have multiple views, yeah. Um, and on the other hand, you have to, you want to use one terminology. Um, and and I, I don't know exactly. Another part of this, my theme here is I don't know, right? Um, that I am, I am guessing a lot about these things. But I, I can say something with a little bit more confidence, which is what, again, is our benchmark? How do we know if we're moving in the right direction for a package system? And the right direction is one that doesn't make the base package um, especially special, right? It's one where we can replace the base package, just like we can replace Hashlang Racket with Hashlang Racket 2. We can replace the package base with package base, uh, base 2 in the future. Yeah. Um, and the, that sort of works both ways. If there's something that doesn't make sense for the base language, then maybe it doesn't make sense for anyone, or we impose that it doesn't make sense for anyone. We say, do it the same way that you have to do for the base, and that way we're all moving in the same direction. So for example, uh, you know, usually when you have a language, racket, Python, Ruby, Java, whatever, you can't sort of write parts of your program and say, go run the Ruby 1.2 uh, VM for this one and the 1.3 VM for this other half of the same program, right? You just have to say, you know, there, there is this, uh, this one thing here. And then where we can improve on that is have Racket, but also Racket 2 at the hash lang level. Right? So, how does that work? It's because we had to change the name of the language. Right? We have to, if, when there's incompatibilities or enough incompatibilities, actually have to change the name. So where I'm trying to get to here is comments on the, the version and packaging that Jay is gonna talk about later, which is this sort of leads to our view that you don't request X version 1.0 and X version 2.0 and have the version somehow separate from X but we instead stick it together to X1 and X2 as different package names. Right? And that's a kind of consistency that, that, I mean, that's a direction that makes it consistent with the base. We could argue all day about the words you use, how you put it together, and how the tools go. But, you know, the reason we fit it uh, together that way was, again, this bigger picture. All right. So... Um, you know, what can be bigger than packages? We can keep going with our analogy and you can have an island or you can have the desert or you can have the undersea. What do these correspond to, right? I'm, I'm keeping, keeping on the path and making things even bigger. I think these are like different distributions of racket right? where you pick what set of packages. You know, this one uses the cactus package and the rock package and a lot more of the rock package. Right? <laughs> and this one uses all sorts of animals, and this one uses you know, underwater breathing packages. Right? And I think one of the things that we worked hard on for the new package system that's not at all obvious unless you like, um, I mean, I keep saying it, but it's not gonna be obvious for a long time, is that you can make your own distributions, and somehow this feels important to me. Right? We've tried to make it easy so that when you get the current, um, we have code uh, organized, we have 
to work on the organization. But right now, you get the main Racket repo, and you can type make installers, and you pick the set of packages from there. And it does all the stuff, or at least on your current machine. Uh, yes? <laughs> okay. Okay. It's pointing out that the coyote is a trickster and um, in the peoples of the southwest. Is that right? All right. Goes with racket. Goes with racket. Yes. All right. Well, here we go. I, some things are inevitable, right? That's kind of the point of the talk too. Um, You can make your own distributions. Do I think this is going to be a big feature of Racket that we're going to have 17 distributions of Racket? I kind of hope not, right? Um, we've had a lot of benefit from when you tell someone to download Racket, you know what they're downloading. Right? There's one main Racket distribution. But um, that has also cut against us sometimes, right? Sometimes for particular classes, no doubt in particular companies where they can't just pick up the latest Racket at any time. Uh, that there would be a lot of benefit from being able to even have groups of packages uh, already configured into an installer. And so that's why, again, we have designed things so that hopefully you have as much freedom to create distributions as you do for creating packages, as you do for creating languages, and so on. Right? We take that as another kind of benchmark that we're fitting things together the right way. And in details that are hard for me to communicate, I. I certainly feel this as I was setting up, you know, helping to write certain parts of the package system, right? That this constrained me and forced me to do things a better way uh, rather than making one big monolithic uh, inflexible script. Right. Okay, so let's see, where are we on the, on the cards here? Distributions, yeah. So I, I will also point out again, this was always possible in principle to make your own distribution. You clone the Git repo, you do whatever you want, right? But it goes back to that, what is possible versus what is practical and what do we try to make easy as a part of our culture. All right. Uh, can we keep going? Let's see. We can go up to the Earth uh, or for planets. I don't know how far it goes. I'm not sure I would have gone as many layers as I have now uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah? Voyager. Voyager, right. <laughs> Why stop there, the universe? Uh, What's the limit of this thing? I, I think there's a lot of room at the top. We're going to find even larger layers of structure, whether it looks like combinations of distributions, I don't know. Um, so, well, you know, the universe maybe. We, so eventually you get to the universe, which is by definition everything. Right? That's what universe is supposed to mean, at least. Um, but then, where did that universe come from? Right? Uh, like. <laughs> I couldn't hear either. No. Well, <laughs> that's that's what I'm concerned about here. Uh, so I kind of started out by saying it's difficult to disconnect ourselves from this process of developing a programming language, and now I'm coming full circle and say definitely don't try to disconnect these things. That in fact we need to think more about the process by which Racket grows and gets developed, and engineer that process as much as the others. Right? And um, you know that means not only figuring out a process that lets us try different alternatives, but figuring out how we figure out different processes and which one best leads to different, different ways of trying out things. Right? There's, this tension exists whether we normally address it or not, uh, about those, those different ways of doing things. And in fact, I'm going to suggest that when we get into certain kinds of debates, what's going on is that two sides of the debate are talking about different layers. Right? One is already committed to something, and the other one wants to revisit at the next layer, up or down, whichever it should go, uh, about how we do things. And that's all fine. That's all good. Kind of I'm trying to provide a framework to remind ourselves that these different layers exist and maybe improve our communication to recognize when we're talking about different layers and when we're fighting with the, the real tension between doing things a particular way, establishing a particular culture, versus allowing a lot of exploration and uh, subverting evolution in the sense of, of being able to do things. 
right? So that's why this is not the right picture here, right? I think somehow, sometimes the picture feels like that. But what I want us as a community is to think more like this. Right? This does not mean a committee of fingers that all agreed on the right way to go. Right? Uh, this is more like many different actors, many of us, pushing in different directions and trying different things out. Right? And it's the, the meta culture here is that how do you do that? Right? And I'm sort of arguing against this committee approach, the committee view of you think you need to get n number of people to agree with you before you can move in a particular direction. So I would suggest that a culture that has emerged for Racket and has worked well for us is you go build it and then once people have the thing that you built, then they're ready to talk about whether they like it or not. And the difference, you know, just from experience, the difference between discussing something and getting a lot of agreement and having something built and getting a lot of agreement, the second goes way more smoothly than the first. And it's not just because all the other people are lazy. Right? It's because it turns out that programming is a good way of expressing yourself. And when you write down in a program what you were thinking about in terms of a design, then other people can see that. And it's instead of you presenting an idea and people say, oh yeah, but you haven't thought about this, this, and this, you give them something and say, oh yeah, I like that, except here are some small, small ways you can refine it. Right? So at all of these le le levels, really, I just want to encourage you to go build it. Right? Whether it's a new library, whether it's someone's library that's sort of fallen out of use or, or gotten a bit crufty, just go grab it and improve it. And uh, that'll help us move along at that layer. Go build the next language. We have no problem with that. Everyone in this room has gotten the hang of that, um, especially in the academic side, right? and that's great. Go, uh, you know, go build the next combination of packages. Maybe go build the next distribution. Go build the next Racket 2, the next Racket 2, or you know, Racket 2 or Racket 3, and so on. Yeah. Right. You've gone, you're, you're string theorist now. Because you've gone from universe, and the emphasis on uni is a universal, a, a single explanation, a single identity, to a multiverse, which is what string theoreticians have argued for for a while now, which is several universes in the living state. Yeah, sort of, and that, well, sort of I'm drawing out the tension. I intentionally did not draw. I intentionally didn't put up a slide with multiple worlds or multiple universes because then it's not racket con, right? The, the other side of this is having a community that thinks a particular way, right? And so this is a real tension. I don't really know how to, to, um, to pin it down, to, to resolve it. Thank you, that's what I was looking for. Uh, and, um, at this level, we actually have a lot of things in place. You know, we have certain mailing lists. We have a release process that, that we follow. We have this idea, a lot of us, that you should go build it, but it's not written down anywhere yet, right? So, you know, we just got through the package system. Maybe you're not surprised we haven't done the next, next few layers. Um, Matthias has made a good start at something closer to this with uh, the style guide, right? So there are all kinds of social processes that we're at the point to really seriously consider and think more about how we grow at that level. Yeah. Okay, so um, this is already my conclusion slide. Uh, I know we have lots of time and that's good because we can, we can then continue the discussion because you will see that my title slide is devoid of conclusions. Um, it, it doesn't actually try to, to summarize everything here because as I said, I'm trying to give you a worldview. This is how I see Racket. I see us as one of our main principles as always trying to make sure that there's not a special thing, but that we can plug in different things, we can involve different things. But at the same time, I see us as developing a strong culture that for certain facets of this problem, we're all pulling in a particular way. Right? So it's not an answer, it's more of a worldview and a framework for discussing uh, individual layers. Right? And the title about the dinosaur was, um, you know, I've been doing this for a while and I get stuck in a particular way of doing things. Right? So I'm always, and I write a lot of code and I control a lot of code effectively just because I didn't make it good enough and not everyone can go change it, right? So what I'm always on the lookout for is, am I kind of stuck in a way and preventing people from moving in a particular direction or when they contribute something, can I easily adapt it and say, yes, let's go that way, 
let's go that way now or let's go that way too uh, and so on and I think that's going that's a part of our culture more generally right so it goes along with just go do it right just go do it and uh, people will be ready to accept something good that you've done even if it changes some direction um, in what we already have so no real answers I'm just trying to start or really continue the discussion at all of these layers thank you So this is a discussion that's being recorded, so I don't know how well that works. Would it make sense for me to pass the microphone around? Repeat the question. Yeah, but these are not questions. This is a discussion. All right. Uh, OK, I will try parroting back what you say to me, uh, or what you say to everyone for a recording. We'll try it that way. Okay. Um, so I don't want to strain this uh, DNA metaphor too much, but I do want to strain it a little bit. Okay. Um, one of the ways in which uh, you know, evolution does work, is not just that you get to create these new organisms, but those new organisms actually work efficiently. And that's why they're actually able to survive, right? Yeah. Uh, and it really is, sorry, it's really gonna work better if I pass the microphone, because okay. I can't do justice to what, what Shriam is gonna say by parroting it back. That's a, that's a pretty backhanded compliment there. Okay, um, Okay. so all that, what I'm talking about is the fact that these new organisms also need to worry about their efficiency to survive, and that's how they actually become members of an ecosystem. And for us, we've now hit this pain point twice where, with whale song, right, this morning the speaker talked about potentially looking into whale song. To be entirely honest, the correct advice to give him is, yes, it's very nice, look at it, but really I doubt you're going to actually use it because of the overhead. So, so one way in which the molecules you present, sort of the, the, the sort of lowest level abstraction, is the racket bytecode, which is wonderful, right? It's great to work with. But it's actually a very, it's kind of the racket bytecode. And it's not been an easy process to port that to another platform. And this is why I also asked this question, I've asked I think both speakers this morning this question about tail calls, right? Do we really want them? Should they really be part of the DNA? of the entire ecosystem, or are they really a feature that some things want? And in Pirate, we're again confronting all of these questions afresh and starting to think about how much can we reuse Racket and should we move away from Racket because we need performance and we want other things. And actually, I'm ready to do an experiment where we don't offer generalized tail calls. I think it's a worthwhile experiment, but Racket's got all these architectural impositions, and I think you know where I'm going with this, so I'll let you know, answer this, or respond. I'm not sure I know where you're going with it. On the technical point of tail calls, as many of you know my pet peeve on this subject is tail calls are kind of overrated compared to the problem of a limited stack. Mm -hmm. right? So many languages, it's possible to get a stack overflow. <laughs> and that's just ridiculous in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. right? If you're going to process a, a recursive data structure, you're probably not re processing it in a detail way. Mm -hmm. Right, but you want to write it naturally, and so it's most important that your continuation can use space like everything else. Yeah. So, but that's a very narrow technical sure, sure, sure. Uh, rant. No, but right uh, now that, that rant is wrong, if you think about Dan, who says, I have to map my memory to the right place. There are lots, the, 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 new, the new platforms are all embedded devices. They're small devices that don't have all the memory that we need, and you are thinking right. too globally. Yeah, but tail calls solves such a narrow part of that problem. That right. They, they need to process trees. Surely you have trees in these 3D rendering, right, Dan? I can't find him. Yeah. Right. Uh, so uh, Setting that aside. Maybe, yeah. yeah. But, so, but the bigger point was about performance, What's was yeah. about efficiency. Your, 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 your abstraction may be too high level, ah. and therefore it's hard for me to say I want to take this language. So you know, right now, we, you know, Pirate is built as a hash lang. Okay, and if I decide Pirate doesn't need tail calls and doesn't really need a strong dependency on composable continuations, right? I would love I can compile it far more efficiently to JavaScript. Um, you know, I should be able to get Dart-like performance for it. Except I can't because if I go if it's a racket language, if it's a hash lang, it sort of gets all this baggage, kind of whether I like it or not. And going through the bytecodes has not worked for us. I, I think I can. And maybe I think I can c continue the conversation better this time, yeah. which I'm agreeing with you. I'm trying to lay out this tension between picking a particular path and sticking with it and building a lot of more stuff, and there are the other paths. And in computer science, in uh, you know programming languages, computer science, academia, humanity, right? We need to explore a lot of these. And there's a certain point where we say this direction is the racket direction that makes us this particular community in that larger endeavor. Mm -hmm. 
it's a real tension how much you stay on or out of that uh, and you're working at the moment at a particular boundary of those and yeah. Yeah. what can we say yeah that's that's a real tension and we can we can keep improving the the way that we do things at the lower level refine the particular direction that we've had to better accommodate uh, more and me more of these directions and it's always uh, there's always going to be that work to do yeah so that wasn't an answer that was a agreement that yeah. I, I had a remark, but I, I would li first like to reply to um, or complement what Shuram said. I think that the great thing about racket is that we know how to build new um, uh, new layers on top of existing ones. The thing we still don't know how to do is how to build a new layer underneath without breaking everything that's on top. And that's I think that's a great uh, great challenge for future programming language design. How how do we build? If you're going to go under, then you can go directly to the yes. Page, which is really what I want. Exactly. Uh, I, think that, that I think that's what Shuram wanted to say. Uh, I, I had th an another remark uh, is that I, I once wrote an article about uh, the I from creationism to evolutionism in programming languages. And uh, the, the, the very basic view of programming is that the programmer is a god and he creates the, the, the program as is, except that sometimes there's a devil who introduces bugs. But as you, e as you evolve, then you, you think that uh, programming is more like intelligent design, where yes, we don't just create a brain dump of our program perfect in our mind, but we design it in layers. And then you find that actually it's unintelligent design because uh, we are not actually intelligent gods, we are stupid. And then you go for uh, Lamarckism, where actually the things don't don't go in uh, any direction, and then you have series of uh, supernatural selection, where there's selection, but there's a goal where the there's a, the ideal language toward which we evolve, and then you have like more like natural selection in which, well, there's not one goal; it's just whatever survives survives, and then you realize that yes, not just that, but uh, uh, you are part of the evolution. You're not outside of it, and then um, so. Uh, and, and then uh, you, fi you find that at every stage of these uh, ways of thinking about programming, you have very different programming tools. When you think that all you need is, uh, when you think you're a perfect programmer, all you need is like the, the tapes, you, 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 you punch the, the, the card and it's, it's ready. Uh, but uh, when you find that you are bugs, you need an editor because to fix the bugs. And then when you find that uh, it's intelligent design, you need like versioning or some, some, some file system to to keep separate layers, and when it's intelligent design, then you need a, a type system or something to, to check your mistakes, and when it's a, a supernatural select, I mean, a, at every step you need different kind of tools that, that correspond to how you think about programming. And m maybe, maybe we need to find what, what, our, what is the implicit view of programming that our tools provide, and if we have a better view of programming, what tools would that uh, better view of programming uh, um, suggest. I, I'm not sure I have anything more to add here. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's a kind of thought along similar lines about these different layers in the analogy, how our solutions are reminiscent in many ways. There are certain things that carry through and yet different in certain other ways. There's a point where we say we're kind of all going this way and other points where we say no, we can allow a uh, much more horizontal uh, um, you know, exploration of the variation and different solutions at different scales. So, the, yeah, there's a lot of good analogies in there about you know, different solutions at the DNA level than the ecosystem layer. This question or response? Uh, I, I like the view, of course. I grew up in that culture. You made me, you taught me. But I'm also afraid that we are building a tower of ba Babylon, uh, the biblical story where a people with one voice, one language, built this tower and they walked away with many different languages They couldn't conf talk to each other anymore. And there was no overlap and everything was destroyed. Uh, for a racket that would be bad in two senses. Number one, internally I've always promoted the idea of interoperability. Languages need to smoothly and safely and soundly interoperate. So should be the developers. The other, f the other fear is that from the very beginning, we had an emphasis on we want to build a racket for others. We didn't build it for our own entertainment. 
Many functional programming languages are built for the creator's entertainment and they die a brutal death of a year later. Uh, we've had customers from day one. Customers not in the paying sense, but <laughs> you know, all kinds of people. And if we speak as a, as a multiverse to our, uh, to our people who, who, who rely on our work, who want to use it in the world, they may walk away too, just like the people back then walked away. And I think it is absolutely critical that we find the overarching idea and always buy into the overarching idea. And it needs to be articulated. I and mean, until it's articulated, letting people just lose will create chaos. So I very much agree with the, the point that that there is this tension between trying lots of things and, and picking one culture or one solution at any different layer. I think what we have actually shown as a community is there's more room for variation than most people think. Right? We have demonstrated that macros don't lead to a Tower of Babel that falls down right away. That we can have hashling lizard and hassling fish and live quite happily in the forest. Uh, on this, this particular one is one case where I don't know whether this works out. You know, it's whether how bad is it going to be when there are racket and minimal racket options on the download page? Uh, is that going to cause a lot of fragmentation? What's the experience? I always start thinking about the Linux experience when I do that. There's yes. lots of Linux distributions, and various ones come in and out of phase. You know, as someone who has to program against a lot of OSs, uh, the Linux variation causes me, at, at the programmer level, much less trouble than back when there were seven Unixes that were common. So there, are, there seem to be a kind of um, a confluence of, of evolution, perhaps, of what amount of variation is just right. right? Uh, you know, a forest can't accommodate just everything, but also a forest with only trees doesn't work. So there seems to be this point where the trade-offs uh, balance or arrive at some happy medium. And I'm confident that we as a group will find that because we sort of have built up enough shared culture along with enough culture of experimentation that, that we'll be able to pull it off. We just have to try. Okay. Anna, do you have a question or a response? Uh, so I just wanted to respond to what Matias said, okay. which is that I think that it's very important that we have something shared that keeps us together and speaks together. But I think that more than anything technical, the thing that we have together is this community that's here in this room. And that as long as we're all here and together and working with each other, then whether we download Racket for Coyotes or Racket for Dinosaurs, that difference is not going to be a big difference. The important thing is to work together as a community. I would just like to add to that. I. That's exactly what I want to get as a bigger picture because we spend all of our time here usually on technical matters. And I think we're going to hear on the package system uh, a, starting, a, a way of starting to think about some of our problems is not solved technically in the package system, but looking for more social solutions. That's something Jay has pushed. So that's one of the ways Jay influences this particular presentation. Yeah. I think I saw a question up back here. Um, I think the first question had to do with going down to a lower level, and that's that might be the next place for a module, a new type of module, because the the fully expanded syntax is is like this interface. Maybe it's the atomic interface you're talking about. And when I s first started looking at the the hashlang stuff, I looked at the typed bracket paper and so forth, and I see that you have the fully expanded bytecode, and then you had to do something with it, and it's in the paper, it's a big case statement. You know, type this one this way, this one this way. And I thought, wow, this would be a great place for a hygienic macro expander where you could write the type checker in. And so, <laughs> that there, so maybe you can, there's a, like, the, it, it gets tied together at that, that level rather than the bytecode level, which is way too low. And we could do something where you can put different compiler technology underneath at that fully expanded level. You know, instead of writing a type checker, you could write I don't know, a CPS transformer, or you could write um, a, a, a stack of optimizers or things like that. And, and then you can start maybe taking out tail recursion or not, or you know, um, doing multi-return function calls or different. So 
that's another direction to to modularize. I think I should eventually just start saying yes and let you move on to the next person because <laughs> I'm always just agreeing. Uh, in response to this idea that um, what we need to do is modularize beneath, I think that uh, one of the things that Matthew Matthew's presentation suggests is that you know we perfected atoms and now we've moved on. We perfected DNA and then we moved on. But I don't think that's the right way to think about it. I think that one of the one of the results of producing the tower in the way that we have is that once we have things higher than the DNA, we can start talking about different DNA um, and the old things that relied on the old way of doing DNA are still around. And we in fact see this in the way that modules work. So when you write a hash laying racket, you can do things that would not have been possible before. So by creating a layer above, we give ourselves the opportunity to experiment with the layers beneath without breaking things. And I think that that's an important part of the racket culture that we don't say that we have arrived and we are right. Um, I think that it says that we focus on the direction that we're going in as opposed to where we're at this moment. And I feel like that's really uh, an important part of what Matthew's talk is. So I agree with the goal of what you're talking about, but I just want to remind that the things that we have, modules and languages and packages, are designed to allow that. Okay, we'll take one more question. No. If you want. One more question. So uh, I, I think um, one concern I have is that if the unique selling proposition for Racket is that it's a language for making languages, that many programmers will find that difficult to understand and not have the opportunity to uh, come to know Racket, both as a, a great language. Uh, uh, ha Hashlang Racket is a, an amazing language as we saw this morning, to solve a variety of problems. And it is also um, an environment in which you can create other languages, other DSLs. Um, but if it's a, a little too PL research type of smell to it, my concern is that not enough people will be able to discover and appreciate that. And I, I noticed that in the Ruby community, there seems to be a, a pretty healthy infatuation with DSLs. But when you talk about them as DSLs, somehow that seems uh, a little less scary. You know, so if instead of hash lang, it was hash DSL, and you were talking to <laughs> two sort of quote unquote normal programmers, I wonder if that might be a little more approachable. So I think what I'm talking about is the psychology, not the metaphysics. It's, it's more how to tell the story about racket. I guess I will take the prerogative to, re to respond to that and, and just appreciate that because that's exactly the sort of thing where we, the people who have spoken the loudest, mostly in Racket up to date, come from the academic community and think a particular way. And so we need to be open and ready for adjusting our sociology in terms of the organization and how we present ourselves uh, to take these other kinds of things into account. You know, What do people who are outside of academia, how do they view things? What's the best way to explain and be clear? and, and uh, and you know, show them what great things we have and, and keep working with them as well. Uh, let's take additional questions uh, after the break or during the break. Um, so let's thank the speaker again.